There was a major effort in the legislation to deal with the problem of the uninsured in the United States. Uh, so there will be about 16 to 18 million Americans who in the next several years will become eligible for the Medicaid program who are not eligible right now, so a major Medicaid expansion. Number two, uh, Congress created these new what we call purchasing pools or insurance exchanges uh, through which the uninsured and small businesses will presumably be able to buy lower cost private health insurance with the help of significant subsidies for many low wage workers from the federal government. So there'll be another 16 to 18 million folks who will get health, private health insurance, many of whom will be helped by the federal government via subsidies. Number three, there is an individual mandate that was enacted by Congress, which basically says to all Americans you have to have health insurance, uh, which is enforced through the tax code. There's not a terribly significant financial penalty, so some Americans, particularly young, healthy Americans, may choose to actually pay the penalty rather than buy the health insurance, which could be problematic, but there is that individual mandate. Fourth, there's a requirement that those employers with more than 50 employees who do not provide health insurance to their employees have to pay a financial penalty. Fifth, there's a whole series, a whole series of new regulations limiting the ability of the private insurance industry to discriminate against those with pre-existing conditions and other high-risk situations. Uh, there's an effort to pay for these insurance expansions through a series of new taxes, uh, new taxes on the wealthy, uh, new taxes which will begin really in 2018, but new taxes on high-cost health insurance plans. Uh, and then there's a whole series of reimbursement cuts to the Medicare program uh, which will help pay for the cost of those insurance expansions. But the big picture efforts are, number one, reduce the number of uninsured, and number, do, number two, pay for it through some new taxes and Medicare reimbursement cuts. This is a huge bill, which much of which will not even take effect until the year 2014. You know all these Medicaid expansions I've been talking about, the individual mandate, the penalties on employers, the new insurance exchanges, the subsidies to low-wage workers. None of those items take effect for the next four years till 2014. And in between now and, which is a problem, but in between now and 2014, we have to figure out how to make all those things work. We have to figure out what these insurance exchanges really are. And we have to create them. We have to figure out how to regulate the private insurance industry to reach the results that we said we want to reach in, these, in, you know, in, in this legislation. We have to figure out what the Medicaid expansion is really going to look like. How are the states going to really add 16 to 18 million folks to the Medicaid program? What kind of impact is that going to have on the states who are very nervous? Many state officials are very nervous because they will pay at least some of the cost for these expansions uh, of the Medicaid program. Um, so we have to figure out how to pay for this. We have to figure out what kind of regulations we need to put in place. We have to create all sorts of new institutions. So there's major implementation issues over these next few years. Had this legislation failed, it would have been a major, major political defe defeat for President Obama and the Democrats in Congress. Having the legislation pass, on the one hand, is a major victory for Obama and the Democrats um, and a major defeat for the Republicans. Uh, but the passage of the bill, as I said, is, is just the first stage in an ongoing political battle. This bill, this legislation, this reform, to a large extent, now defines the Obama presidency. He's been working for this since day one. He's been working for this for the last year and a half. And between now and the midterm elections in 2010, and between now and Obama's re-election campaign in 2012, much of the political debate here in the United States, much of the partisan political debate here in the United States is going to be over the merits or the demerits of this legislation. Is this a good bill? Is it a bad bill? Obama and the Democrats are going to be touting the virtues of this bill, touting the advantages to many Americans over the next several years and hoping that the American public signs on. The Republicans, whether they're saying we should repeal and replace or whether they're just raising issues more generally about this bill, the Republicans are going to be challenging and challenging and challenging the scope of the bill, the breadth of the bill, the cost of the bill, the wisdom of the bill, and on that debate lies the next few years of America's political, uh, you know, political controversy.